called a colleague at the uh, University of Iowa because I knew that they had been offering a statewide talent search for some time. And Dr. Susan Asseline and I talked about possibilities and reached out to others, and particularly the Southeast and, and, and areas that had been in Duke Tip to start a consortium to plan for what are we going to do in various states. And at the Center for Gifted Studies, we launched TIP Kentucky. And we launched it first with uh, opportunities for elementary children. And just now we're going to be able to make talent search identification with above level assessment for others. We're going to start out with a short video on above level assessment. Here we go. What do Mark Zuckerberg, Sergey Brin, and Lady Gaga have in common? The answer may surprise you. They were all above level testers when they were young. They joined millions of other students who have taken an above level test in the last 50 years. So you might be asking, what is above level testing? It is exactly what it sounds like. Give a younger student a test that was developed for older students. Why take an above level test? How is this meaningful? Above level tests can help reveal your child's actual performance level. Often grade level tests are too easy for high achieving and gifted children, since most regular tests are designed to measure whether students have learned grade level material. But they don't spend much time measuring whether students have learned more than that. We call this phenomenon a ceiling effect. Above level tests remove the ceiling to show the full extent of how much students know. Here's another way to think about it. Imagine we want to measure the height of every child in a class and we decide to use a four foot ruler to take these measurements. Would we be able to accurately measure the height of every child who is below four feet tall? Definitely. But what about the children taller than four feet? What information would we be missing about them? Would we say they are all four feet tall, even though there is clearly a difference in heights? Would we guess and hope for the best? Even within one classroom, we might find that our ruler cannot measure every child accurately. However, if the ruler could expand to six feet, seven feet, or even greater, we can measure each child's height precisely. Above level testing can provide this type of accurate information for a student's academic ability level. The more we know about what students are ready to learn, the more equipped we are to offer appropriate curriculum challenges and enrichment opportunities. Okay, so that little video introduces a major concept in a talent search. And Jennifer Wilson, is, who is with us at the Center for Gifted Studies, is going to share information about TIP Kentucky. Jennifer, you're on. All right, thank you. Good morning to everyone. It's a great Saturday and I appreciate everyone being here today. Some of this might be a little redundant for some of you that have been working with TIP Kentucky for, for a few months now, but it never hurts to repeat. And I'm sure there are a whole bunch of people on here that are learning this for the first time. So bear with me if there's some redundancy, but we are thrilled to be able to tell you about our talent identification program of Kentucky. Let's see if I can move this forward. As Dr. Roberts mentioned, uh, just a little bit of history, Duke TIP, to everyone's surprise, closed in 2020. And as she mentioned that immediately she started working with the University of Iowa, what Dr. Roberts didn't share with you when she said immediately, I think the wheels were ticking within the hour that she had learned Duke TIP had closed because within 24 hours she was working with University of Iowa and the, the Bell and Blank Center. And the, the consortium is a wonderful opportunity for just different states, different centers across the United States to be able to work together and solve some of these problems and work with ACT and work with the different above level testing options out there. 
Of course, our overarching goal is identifying and supporting academic talent. And that's what it is, has always been. And when Duke tip had closed the, or shut off, I guess, the, the testing opportunity there, we decided to go with another opportunity. The three main components for the talent identification program, you hear about the above level testing, which you saw the video on, and that ties in really nicely with all of our existing programming that the center has done for decades. Um, there's, of course, many, many resources at the center as well as at the statewide level. And we're wanting this coming spring, 2023, to start to introduce the recognition program that Duke TIP, if you're familiar, we have worked with Duke TIP for decades and worked with the recognition program. So we're gonna hopefully get that incorporated and have a date out to you very soon for next spring. And this was shown very quickly on the video, but basically um, how the above level testing works and what it reveals for you at this, at this school level is when your students have the grade level test, often these students that are hitting 95th percentile or 99th percentile regularly, you're, you're not necessarily fully equipped with regular grade level assessments in terms of what their full capability is. So the above level test, the ones that, um, the one that we're using, IXL, that's out of the Bell and Blank Center, is actually designed for junior high students in the eighth grade and given and administered to students that are in the fourth through sixth grade. So we're trying to break that ceiling effect that they were talking about on the video. Of course, the benefits, not only breaking the academic ceiling for students, so you know really what level they're at, you're also determining the challenge, the degree of challenge needed for each student by subject. Uh, the IXL test um, has four different subject areas that they focus on. So you can really drill down a student maybe grade level in English, but math perhaps they're a couple of levels above. So it's good to have that information. And it helps inform both the educators as well as the families on where their students um, need to go and what they're ready to learn. And that data, um, it provides very meaningful information and can help be a tool for um, identifying high ability learners. Um, for those of you who've not used the IXL test yet, it's a wonderful tool. Um, as we've mentioned, it's an online platform, so they do it on the computer, and it was developed many, many years ago. Bell and Blank Center has been doing testing for over two decades, so they're, they're very, um, fully equipped to handle the type of needs that we would have for above level testing. And it's licensed content developed by ACT. And as I mentioned, there are subject areas. The nice thing is it's split into science, math, English, and reading. So you can really drill down and see what areas the student um, needs to focus more on, perhaps if they're at a higher ability. And just a few basics about the IXL test. It's for students in grades four through six, and we cast the net out to the top 10% in at least one subject area. So I think this is important because oftentimes um, people may think you have to be top 95th percentile in all four subject areas, and that is not necessarily the case. It could be in just one subject area. Um, the teachers actually register their schools on online. So there is a link at Kentucky's or at our website that I can give you um, the cost $49 and it's $22 for students who qualify for free and reduced lunch. Now the sessions, it's relatively short. The, each section is just 30 minutes and there is a break in between, but we ask that you allow three hours for planning purposes for any kind of unforeseen um, issues that come up with testing, technology, et cetera. And the, the best part about the above level testing um, is the opportunity to see the
score interpretations and results, both the educators and the families receive that information. And it's quite extensive to help both the families and the educators know maybe perhaps where they need to go with each student. There's an individual student report. The nice thing about the interpretations, they, for example, if you have a sixth grade student, they will um, compare the scores to actually higher or the talented students in that sixth grade. And when they compare the scores of the eighth grade students, the scores are with typical eighth graders. So it's a nice breakdown and you can kind of see where your student is fitting and it breaks into the subject areas and they offer very, very wonderful, meaningful uh, recommendations for both the families as well as on the education report. Um, they do provide a pyramid of educational options and it shows each of the subject areas and what they might recommend. So there's copy as well as pictorial descriptions that help everyone. And the educator report, you have your tables of the student scores. Uh, something I want to keep in mind is the educators will receive the scores of all the students, but the families only receive the individual report. So they don't see other student scores for obvious reasons. Um, and they will receive a list of resources and suggestions as well. And testing registration um, is open for IXL. It's open all the time. Now there are some blackout periods, so you can go on our website to register. I highly recommend that you give yourself a few weeks um, or look down the line because they do need a little bit of window to, of prep time. And then once the result, once the test is taken, they'll need a little bit of time to submit the score interpretation to you. So um, it's very simple process. Once you've done it once, you've got an account. So then you can go back into your account. So those of you who've already done it last spring, you can go back into your account and just create a new test date. So it's a wonderfully easy process. Now I will say the teachers typically get the test results prior to the family. So the teachers will result, you will release those results to the families. That was one question we had this spring. And some very, very exciting news is we can officially say students in grades seven and eight are now able to register to take the ACT as a part of TIP Kentucky during this school year on one of the national test dates. Um, we don't have it on the website yet, so be looking for communication very, very soon to go ahead and get into the registration process through TIP Kentucky. And the report will, or I'm sorry, the cost is $95, and the report will go to the school as one to TIP Kentucky. Family members will receive a comprehensive report from the Ideal Solutions, which is the same um, part of Bell and Blank that does the reports for the younger students as well. And we will get information out there as soon as possible. We're in the works right now. We just got information recently from ACT, so we're trying to get it organized on the website. Jennifer, and, can I add something there? Yes, please. Um, you all will be the first group that we're sharing this with, but ACT has corrected the process where students who are under the age of 13 are eligible to sign up and take ACT. Um, so if you have a seventh or eighth grader that is going to participate in TIP Kentucky and they are under the age of 13, we are able to work that out now. Um, and we should have that registration process available very soon. Thank you for mentioning that. Did I see a question up there, Tyler? Shana has asked if students take oh. the IXL test online at home or should we arrange a test date at our schools? Excellent question. Um, the test is taken at the school. Um, and I might add most schools are already in the system, but sometimes when you go to register, if you don't see your school name, just hook up with me. You can email me or you can directly email to the testing center and the, they will put your school into the system. We did have a couple of um, quirky situations, but most of the schools should be in there. But yes, you do take the test at the school and it does need to be administered by a certified teacher. It doesn't have to be 
a, a gifted and talented coordinator. It could be a school counselor or a teacher that's willing to do it. So there's some flexibility there, but it does need to be done at the school. That would be a really good question. I see. Jennifer, will there be an application uh, fee waiver for the $95 for ACT? Yes, there will. Tyler, do you want to talk about that a little bit? Tracy, we are still in the works of that, um, but each student is eligible for each student who qualifies for free and reduced lunch. And that is the student themselves qualified, not just through attending a school where everyone gets free or reduced lunch. So if they are qualified for free and reduced lunch, they can request up to four fee waivers for the ACT, and they would get that from their middle or high school counselor. Um, and that would waive the $63 fee for the ACT. And that leads into Leslie's question, which is why is the cost for the test more expensive than the regular cost of ACT? Um, so ACT, the cost is $63 for that. And then we have an additional cost for the comprehensive report that takes a look at the student's actual scores and then provides service options that are a match for their scores. And then um, we also have a tip Kentucky fee for being able to provide the benefits that we will be doing. Anything you want to add to that, Jennifer? No, that sounds good. Unless somebody else has another question. Again, we're in the works on this with ACT. It's been um, a two-year process and we're very excited to be, I know it seems long for all of you, but we're very excited that uh, ACT is working with us on particularly on the below 13 age, which was a, an issue for a couple of years. Um, and we're working through the free and reduced lunch. So we will have that information hopefully very soon to you about how to coordinate that. And I wanna say that as a consortium and the talent search organizations, we are pushing on ACT to try to get it even more streamlined for the free and reduced lunch students, because we want to make sure that it's never a barrier for students to participate. Um, so ACT is currently, I think they are calling it a, um, a task force where they're looking at these free and reduced lunch students and how we can make it easier for them to register and get that fee waiver. So we are hoping to have more information about that. So stay tuned. Great questions. I realize this is not necessarily about TIP Kentucky specifically, but it is very, very relevant. And I want to share it with all of you because we've had such a wonderful summer with our Camp Discover camps and a wonderful year with great feedback in terms of how the above level testing has benefited students throughout the state of Kentucky. We are in a partnership with Johns Hopkins University for a federal grant with the US Department of Education at the Javits grant called Project Launch Plus. And I'm sure there are several of you online that have um, either been in contact with me regarding the grant. And I just personally want to thank all of you that have been in contact with us because um, it's really been a great experience for these students that would not have otherwise probably been able to go to a residential program or perhaps to even take the above level assessment. And what this grant has allowed us to do is focus on talent development for sixth graders who have had very limited opportunities in the past. Now those opportunities could be due to financial reasons or they could possibly be due to living in a rural um, living situation that has limited their opportunities. Um, and as a part of the grant, I'd like to really emphasize the above level assessment, which is uh, a key component that all the students in the, in the grant who participate receive that is paid by um, the Javits grant or the Project Launch Plus. Um, another component that is a wonderful opportunity if students are selected is Camp Discover and the virtual discovery. And as you can see on the slide, we had a few pictures from last summer's 
programs. The residential camp was a huge success. We had, this was actually our second summer with the camp. Uh, the first summer, the grant was initiated very, very close to um, when they needed to do the camp. So it was much smaller and it wasn't completely in place. Um, we, for those of you who are familiar with it and have had students that have um, participated, you know that we have to um, select the students randomly to attend the Camp Discover, but it's a wonderful opportunity regardless. Um, it's strictly for sixth grade students, and then they go back to, um, if they are selected for the camp, they go back to the camp a second summer. And there is also an opportunity, Johns Hopkins and the Center for Gifted Studies have been working together on informational emails. And those emails go out to the families of all the students um, and they're helpful research-based tips on how to work through different situations that are um, common for students of high ability. So that is another opportunity for all of the participants in the grant. I would love to have every school this year apply. Um, it's a wonderful opportunity. The, the camp is free, the above level assessments are free, and the information research based information emails are, are free. Well, I say free, they are paid for by the Javits grant. So it's a wonderful opportunity. Um, Tyler, do you want to show that little snippet? We have a video from View from the Hill that talks about the camp specifically. Uh, Camp Discover is this opportunity for more gifted kids. What they do here is basically they push you like to your limit. Bridge building, theme park design, even Legos are part of the curriculum. There's a Lego class where we build like different structures with Legos. Today we were building a boat and seeing how many marbles could we could hold up on it. Camp Discover began last week with more than 96 graders from within three hours of Bowling Green who have limited exposure to gifted learning. Perhaps their rural location, perhaps family income, or some other circumstance. Week two of Camp Discover is for last year's class who is invited back. I have a, a great bond with those people that I met last year, so that helped out with this year too, and the classes were really good. There was this engineering class like last year and this year. And it made me figure out that I like engineering a lot and I might pursue that as a career once I get older. Who's going to ask? That's exactly the point of the variety of learning experiences offered at Camp Discover. Camp Discover is all about seeing possibilities and developing talents at a critical age. It's an amazing opportunity to learn more. They push you hard to try your best. With this week's View from the Hill, I'm Amy Bingham. Thank you, Jennifer. Yeah. Uh, oh, I was going to share my last little bit here, but okay. Um, there we go. Actually, Dr. Roberts already talked a little bit about some of these programs, but um, as a part of the TIP Kentucky program, programming is a huge component because obviously once you find out um, what areas of strengths are, with the different students. You wanna offer enrichment opportunities and programming opportunities in addition to what is going on in the school system. We have many, many opportunities at the center. Um, Super Saturdays will be coming up in November, Idea Festival in February. Uh, I can't remember when the doctor, can you all share when the doctor's Modi service project, is that it's November? Soon. No, it will be launched soon in September. That's a wonderful opportunity for students in both middle and high school to get involved if they enjoy service opportunities. And of course, the residential camps listed below. And next spring, travel to Italy is the, is the country of choice. So I think that's everything. I just wanted to give a quick thank you to all of the educators, school districts, and schools who have already participated in TIP Kentucky. I've had phenomenal response. We've had hundreds of students already 
that have tested. We've heard wonderful reports from teachers about how they've discovered certain areas of strength that they didn't know about in certain students. And talking earlier about the equity piece, this is a great opportunity for students of different backgrounds to be assessed a little bit deeper to see if um, there may be some areas that they need to work at a higher level. Thank you so much. And thank you, Jennifer. Our Javits grant has two more years. And if you are within three hours of Bowling Green, your sixth graders would be eligible to be involved. And please note that Javits is looking for research. And so it has a research design. Lots of your sixth graders can do the above level assessment and uh, half of them would be randomly selected for summer programming, part of the research design. So if you have questions about it, please get in touch with Jennifer because we want opportunities for talent development to be out there and, and be readily available. There is a question in the Q&A that I don't think has been addressed. Um, Bren has asked, did answers come with the results of the ACT? Um, and I can take this if you want. Yes, sure. please. Um, so the cost to participate in TIP Kentucky does not include the answers um, with the ACT, but ACT does have a program called the Test Information Release. And you can pay an additional, and I've just looked it up, it's $30 fee if you order it when you register. And that includes the answers that students responded to, and then also the correct answers. And that is currently available on the national test dates for December, April, and June. I do want to point out, though, that with above-level testing, we are not encouraging folks to do test preparation for that because the whole point of above-level testing is to administer an assessment that's intended for older students and then determine how well students are able to perform on that. And if they are doing test preparation, then that kind of negates the entire point of it. Um, it's fine for them to know the structure of the ACT and what they're going to be asked to do on it, but prepar preparing for the material itself um, gives us not the information that we're looking for with above level assessments. Thank you very much.